Hector Neris is signing with the Cubs. Let's talk about it next. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Alongside Sam Olver, I'm Matt Cozy. Best way to support the show is by listening every day on your preferred audio platform and by pressing like and subscribing on YouTube as we make the push to 8,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. Sam and I are lifelong fans, taking our passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. Today's bonus episode is presented by FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. We are here on a Saturday with breaking news as the Cubs have swooped in and made a big bullpen addition. ESPN's Jeff Passan was the first to break it as right-handed relief pitcher Hector Neris and the Cubs are in agreement on a one-year, $9 million contract that includes an option for 2025. Uh, Let me quote this from Passan. The Cubs have been waiting most of the winter to strike, and in doing so with Neris, who's coming off a season in which he had a 171 ERA in 68 in the third innings, the Cubs get the best reliever left on the market, one who will pitch high-leverage innings on a team trying to win, close quote. Sam, an exciting bullpen addition for the Cubs. Yeah, and, and a really good value deal. You know, first I want to break down just the the logistics of the deal. So they basically get him for one year nine. If he if he appear, appears in sixty games, um, he's he's got a team option one year nine. If he if he appears in sixty games, the team option converts into a player option. I don't really see the downside for the Cubs because if he appears in sixty games, it probably means he pitches well. If he pitches well and it, and it converts into a player option, and he wants to leave and get more money, you still got one really good year out of him, which is what you're probably seeking. If he wants to opt back in, you got one year. Uh, out of them already that's good so you could add a second right uh, the the only really complete downside would be is if he doesn't pitch well and somehow pitches in 60 games but then you just go to his career he's never had back-to-back bad years so the odds are he'd be good next year anyway so mm-hmm. there's plenty plenty of really good things there now let's break down Naris as a as a pitcher so as you said he had, had, had the best year of his career um counting number wise Last season, 171 ERA, he was tremendous. He probably won't be that guy. Um, He he had a a fielding independent pitching, basically an expected ERA um, in the high threes. But but the year before, it was a lot lower than that. So if he's somewhere in the middle of that, you're getting great value. Um, He's got a tremendous splitter. That's his out pitch, kind of like Mark Leiter Jr., but obviously a much better pitcher than Mark. And I think one of the interesting things with Neris is, is this Cubs bullpen is pretty void of lefties. Uh, right. And, and he, he gets out lefties That's last, great. last year, last year, lefties, I believe, let me just pull this up. I, I don't want to misquote myself, but I believe he had a, uh, lefties had a five seventeen OPS against him in 2023. Um, and, and in his, in his career, he's been pretty evenly split. So, you know, if you don't, if you're not able to add a lefty and lighter junior, isn't the guy, you know, that you're hoping he could be, and you don't trust Luke little, this is a guy that you feel pretty comfortable with um, getting out lefties. I would project him as a guy probably in the low threes with his ERA. I think he pitches about 65, 70 innings or so he'll strike out about 80 to 85 guys in those things. He's very reliable. And now, now, yeah. you know, now you look at, you basically, you basically have taken away Fulmer and Boxberger and you've replaced them with Elmonte and Neris. And I would argue, you know, on paper, those are massive upgrades to the bullpen. You have Neris, Merriweather, Alzali now is kind of your your big three at the end there. And and we'll see how council works with that. Maybe they add a lefty, maybe they don't, but but I think Yeah, maybe so. I think you come out of this deal and now say the Cubs bullpen should have enough going into late March to be not only a, a solid part of this team, but, but a strength. I think it's uh, an amazing move that, that Hoyer is able to, to get done, especially when you consider the, the value and the dollars associated with some of the guys that have just come off the board this week. 
uh, Matt Moore, David Robertson, John Brebbia. Um, there was a couple other names as well. I do think a couple lefties are in the mix still, like a Scott Alexander or a Brad Hand. And who knows? Maybe if that big trade is still to come, maybe that isn't the bullpen. And the Cubs just have a lockdown group uh, yeah. out there at the end of games. This is the type of move. Uh, when I saw it, I almost imagined like Alzali and the other dudes like cheering in their apartment or wherever they are. Because Neris so is not only reliable, he's he's at times been a, a feared player, uh, one that's been very effective. I, I know the Yankees were connected with him uh, throughout the offseason, a couple other teams as well. But it, it does change the outlook of the bullpen. And you started to get into it. And so I was able to, to write up a little bit of a graphic here that we can kind of talk about uh, the mix if we wanted to. Uh, but I do think Naris is is the eighth inning person. Yep. Alzali's in the ninth. And uh, this is in ascending order, I believe they call it. Uh, followed by Merriweather, Smiley, Leiter, Almonte, Quas. And I, I keep putting Wisneski in here for now. Obviously, uh, it's up to Craig Council. But then you have Assad, you have Pannon, Sam, you have Palencia, Little, Thompson, Rucker, uh, Bailey Horn, a prospect. And... Carl Edwards Jr., who agreed to a minor league deal on Friday. So for eight spots, there's like 14 people. Right. Um, and so that's good competition, too. Yeah, and you're and, and they're gonna come up and get hurt and all those things. So, you know, you're gonna need you're gonna need all those guys. And yeah, I'm glad you mentioned Edwards. He'll be in the mix last year. Carl Edwards, just real quick. I mean, it took last night when I, you know, I looked it up. It took about forty-five seconds of research to figure out what his problem is. Um, what he, is it? Versus righties, he 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 was. Well, he didn't his, pitch that much. First of all, in like thirty innings, right? And and, and he just got absolutely just terrorized by left-handers. So he's got to figure that out. Um, but yeah, that's a good move. I I think the bullpen. I think when 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 you go in and you take yourself and you transport yourself to you know, Thanksgiving and you're saying, what does this Cubs team need? And we said, Hey, right. I said, Hey, a couple of starters, uh, a couple of bats and a couple of relievers. Um, I, I am comfortable. Do I want to see him add another lefty? Sure. But I am comfortable saying that the bullpen part of this off season is complete. Yeah. Uh, yeah if, if they don't make another addition, crucial. the, the bullpen is better and they are complete. So now you shift right. to, okay, you know, Bush and Bellinger, is that enough for two bats? That's a different thing for a different show. Um, right. Imanaga, just one starter, is that a different thing for a different show? But the bullpen is good enough that not only should they be improved, but I think it should be a major strength. And remember, the council part of it also makes it improved. I think they're going to be much quicker to find their rhythm. Right. I don't think it's going to take three months to figure out a, a correct hierarchy that makes sense. And um, this should be a um, should be a good Cubs bullpen. I think if Naris Naris needs to limit the walks, that's the only thing I'm a little worried about with him. When they have a lead the first weekend of the season, how do you feel entering the sixth inning? Let's say I think you feel like I think. Every team, even even the teams that have great bullpens on paper, I think everybody's nervous early because year to year, you just never know. You just never know. But sure. I think you feel as comfortable as you possibly can. I think if it's opening night and it's it's 3-2 headed to the seventh and, you know, Merriweather comes in and then you have Naris to face Seeger and, and Evan Carter and these yeah. guys. And Let's then you go. go to Let's Ausalai. break it down. You go to you go break to it Ausalai. down. Come on. You go to, you go to Ausalai in the ninth. and. You feel as good as you can, and, if and you win a ball game it, is what you do. Yeah, and you know, we'll see. You know, and that game one and zero. It's all you can do. It'll be on ESPN, and, and they've really struggled with their you know Sunday night baseball coverage. So, big addition on the north side. The Cubs signed Hector Neris. Be sure to smash the like button uh, as people search Hector Neris Cubs. We come up more often. Comment below if you're and, watching and listen, the replay or rewatching. And I've been telling you guys all off season, patience is a virtue. <laughs> oh, have you? <laughs> just, just you know what I mean. Just, uh -huh. just let the market do its thing. Trust in <laughs> Jed. 
the narrowest thing worked out. I'll tell you all this. Jed Hoyer really loves to find the, the most value. I mean, that second year, I yeah. mean, he really soaked that up. Sure. Um, think about it. It's a one-year, $9 million deal. And then according to Passon, it could be two years, 23.25. Yeah, that's incredible value. So. And I think I think the splitter is the best pitch in baseball. I've been on the record saying that. I think I think it is the new best Wow, pitch really? In yeah, I think it's the best pitch in baseball. I think a good split. You look at you look at Otani, you look at the guys that have a lot of success. They all that that, that splitter is nasty and Hector Neris has it. Now, and I just want to say this cuz you told me 10 to 15. So I you know, I love Correct. this stuff, but I just want to say this. I'm inclined to say change up by the way, but splitter's close. Last year last year Around this time, was there a bigger supporter of Mark Leiter Jr. than me? No. No. You were the Ma leader. Mark, I've been a huge fan of yours. You're on the clock in spring training, brother. I think you, I think so. If, if you better pitch well, yeah. you know, or unfortunately yeah. we'll see you in a Philly uniform. Or your you know, tribe is spoken. Yeah, you're gonna have to pitch well. You can't just forget how to pitch and, and lose the splitter like you did in September. Let us know in the comments, who are your eight guys in the bullpen on opening day? And as we move into February next week, Sam, uh, yeah, still looking at what offensive additions they could make of a staring contest between Hoyer and Boris and Bellinger. Uh, is Imanaga that, that lone starter they add? Uh, so a lot of good questions and, and still room, still room to run. It's a good they staff. Figure, There's a lot of good pitchers on this staff. This week, we said 40 M's to the first threshold of the luxury tax. Now there's 30, uh, 31 M's. So, yeah, so uh, that still, could be still room. That could be that could be Bellinger and and then maybe maybe get like Solaire or something. <laughs> <laughs> there is uh, momentum happening uh, here, make a trade or whatever. Solaire's market's quieter than a library. Oh man, Cubs I mean, side Hector oh, Naris. Really pleased to be with. Uh, all the Cubs fans this weekend to break that news. This is Locked On Cubs. We're here five days a week talking Cubs, uh, and uh, we'll be here the rest of the offseason and beyond. You give us 20 to 30 minutes. Typically, we'll give you all things Cubs with a laugh or two along the way, or when there's breaking news that strikes like there was today. Be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube as we make the push to 8,000 subs. Shoot, Sam. With this type of breaking news, we're only about 100, 120 subs away from 8,000. We might get that before our next regular episode. Go Cubs, uh, man. That's what's really exciting about that. Check us out uh, in Displays, February 7th. Smash the like button for the algorithm. Yes, we will be in Displays <laughs> uh, Wednesday, February 7th. If you're in the Chicagoland area, would love to meet you. Tickets only $10. Uh, the and available at the link in the episode uh, description. What do you think the next move is before we sign off? Uh, I think I think the next move will be the Chicago Cubs signing free agent center fielder, former MVP award winner Cody Bellinger. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think that need I think that'll be the next move. And 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 I'm really curious what what the staring contest is because you know to right. me i'm old school who you blinks know, spit your hand shake 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 on it six for 150 versus you know six for 200 meet at 175 and we'll see you in mid-february i don't know who's who's trying to get that extra my guess is his name rhymes with with you know rot roris <laughs> yeah it's uh it's not exactly a treasure hunt to find out who the culprit is. There. And I have lunch with Boris later, so I'll be talking with him. Hector Neris to the Cubs. Exciting breaking news here on a Saturday. He's Sam Olver. I'm Matt Cozy. This, this is Locked on Cubs. Cubs. Go Cubs, fellas. There is momentum happening here.